the church, we hear a lot about obeying God, that it's important, that we need to do it. But if you're anything like me, you hear the word obey, and it kind of makes you go, ooh, no thank you. I don't want anybody telling me what to do. But the older I've gotten, the more I realize that when I feel that way, that's really a pride issue because if I don't want somebody telling me what to do, that means that I think that I know what the best thing is to do. And if you look at my life in the past, you look at my track rec record, it's very evident that I don't always know what the best thing is to do. I mean, like, do I really think I know it all? No. So as Christians, we're called to obey God. But why? Well, first of all, if we look at Psalm 119.73, which is one of the things we read this week, it says, talking about God, you made me, you created me, now give me the sense to follow your commands. I love that because it acknowledges the fact that, you know, sometimes we don't make sense. We don't want to follow God even though he made us and created us and knows everything. And so if God did make us, then he knows everything about us. We also know that he's for us. We also know that he knows everything. So it kind of points to the fact that we need to follow him. But you might be asking, okay, well, if I follow him, if I obey him, does it really make a difference? And that is a valid question because if you're gonna change the way that you think and the way that you operate, if you're going to submit what you want to what God wants, you really wanna know if it's going to make a difference in your life, like, is that going to make some kind of impact on my day-to-day -day life? So you be the judge. Let's look at some of the things that we read this week. In Psalm 111, it says, remember we read a bunch of Psalms. And if you didn't read with us, it's fine. Keep listening. You can still learn and understand what we're talking about. In Psalm 111, it says that when we obey, we get wisdom. Okay, well, I don't know about you, but I could use a little wisdom. Wisdom in the Bible is talking about applying, knowing how to apply the things that you know. So you can know all these really cool facts. You can know all these really good theologies and ideologies and theories, but do you know how to apply them to your life? Do you need some wisdom? Psalm 111 says that if we obey God, then we, get, we gain wisdom. In Psalm 112, in Psalm 112, it says we get joy in verse 1. In verse 2 and 3, it says that our children will be blessed and we will be blessed. In uh, 112 verse 6, protection. Do you need a little bit of protection in your life? And that's because it's going to protect you from doing things that are stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're asking God what to do and he tells you what to do, well, then that's going to lead you away from something that is not uh, beneficial for you. In verse 112, 7 and 8, it talks about giving you courage. In nine, generosity. It makes you a generous person. I want to be known as a generous person. And in verse nine of Psalm 112, it gives you influence and honor. All those are blessings just for obeying. In Psalm 118, we get victory. Is there something in your life where you're like, man, I need some victory in this area. Seek God and obey him. And Psalm 118 says you'll get some victory. Psalm 119 was the last psalm that we read. It's the longest chapter in the whole Bible. And it says in verse 6 that you can avoid shame. I mean, that's enough for me right there because shame is the worst and most destructive thing in your life. I, if I can avoid that at any cost, I will. Verse 24 of Psalm 119, it gives you pleasure. Psalm 30, uh, 119 verse 32 helps you get, gain understanding Verse 35, happiness. Obeying God makes you happy. I think a lot of us think, oh, I, don't, I gotta obey God. It's gonna be horrible. It's gonna be the most miserable existence ever. No, it'll make you happy. In Psalm 119.37, life. It gives you life. 43, it gives you hope. Are you needing some hope? Uh, and 119.45, freedom. 119.52, it comforts you to obey God. Um, 81 through 88, it teaches you patience because you have to wait to, on God's timing. If he's telling you to wait, you have to wait. If he's telling you to go, then you have to go. And so it teaches you patience, which, okay, we need that. I know we live in a fast-paced world, but we still need patience. Also, 156, love this one. It brings you personal revival and refreshment. And we all need that in this world that we're living in. It's this, this feeling of being refreshed. And in 165, great peace, not just some peace. It gives you great peace when you obey God and stability. And in 173, it gives you a heart to help people. All those things are great. And so you be the judge. Do you want those things in your life? 
then the answer is to obey God and whatever he says. All right, in Matthew 22, 35 through 40, I want to take a look at that because we have to know if we're going to obey God, how do we know what he's saying? In Matthew 22, 35 through 40, the Pharisees are asking God, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus says, I'm going to paraphrase, we got to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love others as ourselves. And that that is wrapped up, all the law is wrapped up in those two commands. So number one, it's got to be loving. Are we loving? Loving God and loving people. Number two, actually, what I want to add to that is John 4, 24 says, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So we can't sacrifice the truth for love. Like we can't go, well, that part of the Bible doesn't really matter because I just want to love people. Like, no, we can love people. We can disagree pe with people and still love them. We got to love people in spirit and in truth. Number two, Jesus says in John 14, 6, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And so if we're going to love in truth, we have to love the way that Jesus did. So we can kind of bank on whatever Jesus said was right and true and good. Those are the things that we can obey. So that's the second one. The first is love God, love people in truth. The second is um, that anything that Jesus said to do is safe. That's another way to know what God is saying. If it contradicts a teaching of Jesus, don't obey that. That's not God. And then the third one is People always ask me, how do you know what God is, is telling you to do? So this is what you can do. You can pray and ask God about something. What do I do about this thing? And then you have to listen and watch. To listen and watch. You're not gonna, most times you're not gonna get an answer right there in the moment. But you listen and watch. And what you're looking at is you're, you might go to a Christian person and ask their opinion. Somebody that you know is mature and wise. Like don't ask the person next to you who's a really good friend who just started walking with Jesus, because they might not have that filter yet. You want to ask somebody who's been on the Christian walk for a while. You want to listen to sermons, church, um, podcasts, any of that. Also, you want to get still before God and read his word and listen and just pray about what you're, what you're reading. You might want to journal about it if you're a journaler. And look at your situations. Like, I just um, decided to go and start working part-time. And things just, the, per, the, the place where I'm ending up working, it just kind of, the situation worked itself out, really, while I was praying about it. And so, when you're looking at, at your circumstances, and you're listening to God's direction through sermons and, and godly people, and you're reading His Word, those things will start to line up and all say, the same thing and all points you in the same direction. It all works together. Also, there's kind of a knowing in your spirit. Like if you're starting to go down a road that is not where God wants you to go, you'll start to, to feel that the Holy Spirit is going, well, don't go down there. And it feels like your conscience, like, oh, I, I don't know that I'm supposed to do that. Okay, so you got to pay attention to that. And that is something that you learn the longer that you walk with Jesus. But once he says go, you got to go. Like, don't stall out over analyzing. Don't be afraid to move. Once you feel like you've got an answer for God from God, you can ask for confirmation and say, I think this is where I'm supposed to go. If this is where I'm supposed to go, then please give me confirmation and then go and wait for confirmation. Sometimes it comes after. Don't stall out over analyzing all your choices because if you make a wrong choice, God's grace covers that. You know, he's not going to laugh at you and and sorry, we got somebody at the door. He's not going to laugh at you and think that and, you know, hope and not help you. Okay. So his grace is going to cover all those mistakes. Lose home. Okay. So here's your Q&E. Q&E questions and encouragements. Pick one. Number one, ask God for a heart to obey him, to show you what he's saying and to give you a heart to obey. Or two, Pray that Psalm 11973. Remember it said um, it said to have you know God made you, God created you, and to please give you the sense to obey him. Or number three, ask him for guidance and understanding of what he is saying. That's the same as the first one. I got distracted. He brought me coffee and it distracted me. Let me go over those again. Q and E. The first one is ask God for a heart to obey. And to show you the benefits of obeying. That was the first one. The second one was the same. To pray Psalm 119.73. And the third one was to ask for guidance and understanding of what God is saying. 
There you go. All right. So happy, what's today, guys? Friday? Happy Friday. I will see y'all on Monday. Bye.